I think we've always had that thing though, City fans, it's always been like a family thing. I've always found that it's always the community. Even though we get slagged off about the empty seats and everything, the fans are here that mean to be here and that want to see the team pass the line and that's what we're here for, to cheer them on each game. City against Luton Town brings back a lot of memories. 14th of May 1983, I know exactly where I was, at Main Road, full of anticipation. City had been in the top flight consecutively for something like 17, 18 seasons. I'd never seen them relegated, and that day the worst thing happened. City considered late, Raddy Antich scoring the goal, and they went down, and I, I was in tears. I don't mind admitting I was in tears, and it was a new experience for me. And it felt like the end of the world, and look at where we are now. Different world indeed. Playing in goal that day for City was Alex Williams. Let's see how he remembers it. Yeah, it was a long time ago now. I think it was 82-83 uh, season, the last game. Uh, we needed a point against Luton, and uh, a lad called Radianti scored probably his one and only ever goal, which sent us down. Was it painful to think back to that game? When you went into that match, you must have thought you were going to stay up. Yeah, we just thought, you know, a point. We'd never been in the bottom three. We thought, no problem. And as we speak, uh, the former Luton uh, Captain Brian Horton is behind me doing an interview, so he's living the dream, but we are where we are today. What a contrast to the fortunes since then. I mean, City have gone on to become the best team in the world. Yeah. Luton Town are just hoping to survive, really, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, in some ways, I think the Luton Town game paved the way for the transition of Manchester City to where we are today, so there was some good which came from that defeat, but it was painful on the day. So is there, when you watch this game this afternoon, is there a little bit of you thinking, come on, we've got to beat Luton, a little bit of revenge here? Well, I, I say that in every single game, but it's going to be even sweeter if we can beat them today. Not that it'll make a difference to what happened uh, all those years ago, but it'll just be nice for me to go home and have a glass of wine knowing we turned them over. I bet you weren't smiling in 83, but you're smiling today. I am, yeah. I wasn't smiling then, and I wasn't smiling for about a month afterwards, but where we are today is un unbelievable. Let's keep on living the dream. Can you remember what you were doing on the 14th of May, 1983? I was in the Kipax. Looking forward to a win to keep us up, and we didn't get it. <laughs> Did you come that day thinking City would stay up? Oh, definitely. Definitely thought they'd stay up. Never, never doubt in my mind that we'd stay up that day, and then it was about 10 minutes from the end, and we had conceded, and the, the fellow in the white suit ran up at the end. I remember it well. So it's obviously etched in a memory <laughs> like it is in mine. My... Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Along with Bert Taubman's testimonial. I can go back a bit, yeah, yeah. So does this fixture today bring back those memories or were they at the forefront of your mind anyway? No, no, not really. No, other, other things have moved on since then, haven't they? It's uh, stuck between two uh, European games, so we just want to come out of it in a good way, don't we? The world has Get certainly the changed a lot since then, hasn't it? Absolutely, it has, yeah, absolutely. Was it painful uh, that day? Because it was for me. Oh, it's very painful. As painful as the, the day we... Uh, got done by Liverpool and we thought we didn't need to win that day and we did didn't we we thought a draw was good enough and it wasn't on the cards was it the brown suit and the white socks from Luton's manager I, I must admit I've been there most of the season and I missed that game because I was playing cricket on Littleton Road in Salford and we listened to the game when we were fielding on a little transistor radio and to say I wasn't best pleased uh, would be an understatement and then I watched the game back on match of the day that night and the figure of Mr Pleat and the brown suit and the white socks is still with me today. And it must have been a bit of a culture shock it was to me at that time to see City go down. Absolutely, absolutely it was. I mean you never expect it. You, all, you Obviously you always hope that things will go the other way with teams and what have you. But it wasn't to be, it wasn't to be. And then you look where we are now and you think, did it really happen? Well, yes it did really happen. Typ typical City I suppose back then certainly. Uh, do you feel a little sense of revenge if City get a good thumping on win today? On Wednesday sorry? Not or, today. Or today? No absolutely no 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 the main thing about today is a win and fingers crossed a big win because it's so tight at the top goals could make the difference at the end of the season so as I say two priorities one is a win for the three points 
and two is a convincing win and with a few goals because it is going to be very very tight over these next few weeks. My story from 1983 is that my mate Tony and me we were sat in a pub in Ellesmere Port and we thought let's go and watch Luton's last game of the season in the first division as it was then. Anyway long story short we got to Main Road found it was an all ticket game so the only place that we could get a ticket was off a ticket tout so for a three pound ticket we paid six pounds it was outrageous at the time but anyway the long story short is where me and my mate tony were sat was right behind the goal in the 84th minute radianti scored um of course being luton fans we had to sit on our hands with our hands in our mouths and everything until we got the other side of Moss Side and what have you where we let out this almighty scream of joy and everything but yeah that was my story from 83 I remember the pleat running onto the pitch at the end all the Man City fans coming on and deciding oh no you're not going to run on our pitch and what have you but yeah it was a good day out a good day out yeah one of one of many I've, I've experienced with Luton but we've had ups and we've had an awful lot of downs I can tell you I mean, relegated to the conference being one of them. But hey ho, 10 years ago we were, what, playing at Bath City in the pouring rain. Today, we're at Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. What a turnaround in 10 years. Absolutely, really pleased for you. Yeah. Um, what about the fortunes then, the fortunes of the two club? You mentioned you went into non-league. Yeah. No City went down into the third tier. Yeah. But the difference between the two clubs now is enormous, oh, isn't it? Oh, it, 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 it doesn't bear thinking about, I mean, in, in the Premier League at the moment, yes, all right, we've enjoyed our stay in the Premier League. Money is everything. Money is absolutely everything. Uh, the, I mean, I work with a lot of Wrexham fans over in Prestatyn. And the thing about it is they keep saying that, well, we're going to do a Luton. No, you won't. You'll never do a Luton. Luton did it with absolutely no money whatsoever. Wrexham have got multi-million pound backers. Manchester City have got multi-million pound backers. Who's to say if we stay in the uh, in the Premier League, we won't get multi-million multi pound backers. We've got a new stadium on the way and we're really, really looking forward to that. Long may it continue. I assume you today then you're coming philosophically expecting defeat, are you? Well, if we can keep it to single figures, I'll be well happy, <laughs> shall we say. I mean, you never know you're looking a big city, do you? It's a game of... 22 blokes on, on a football field and what have you. Yes, we are absolutely decimated at the moment with injuries. As Rob said in his, um, in his press conference the other day, we've got seven central defenders on, at the club and not one of them has trained this week. So, it, it. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see who actually gets a call. If I'd have brought me boots, I'd have probably got a game myself, like, you know. Listen, enjoy the day. You clearly love football. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, nice to have met you. Thanks very much, mate. Well, those are certainly some great memories of years gone by, but here we are in 2024. City just have to win, don't they? Hopefully, we still got the legs. Players are fit, and we turn them over a nice CC 2 to 3 0. But I think it will be a close game because Luton are fighting for their lives. It's always a danger, isn't it? Always the a danger, yeah. Don't know who their actual players are who cause us problems, but I think as long as we got a quick defender at the back, we should do it. And you're, you've come a long way to be We come game. out here from Bristol. Every game, season ticket orders, for all for our sins. And we've gone through black and blue, bad times, bad times and bad times, and now's the good times. Back from Madrid again on Wednesday. And back from Madrid on Wednesday, which we, everyone had a great time and every supporter was great and Manchester City should be proud of them. Um, I think it's a good game sandwiched in between, you know, two sort of monster games. Um, but you've still got to earn the right. Everyone's saying it's going to be an easy game. Uh, we've had two games down at Kenilworth Road. The first one certainly wasn't easy. So, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but if they do the right things, they've got enough quality to beat Lewin. And obviously... It's a day when the fans are know what's at stake. City have just got to win, haven't they? Yeah, you, 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 every game's a must win now, isn't it? You know, it's a massive week coming up, obviously. Luton today, uh, Madrid in the week, FA Cup semi final next weekend. So, you know, people talk about the T word and, you know, the double treble and all this. It's, it's getting down to that business and that nitty gritty. And yeah, you've just got to keep grinding the games out, keep winning. Um, obviously, today he's chosen to rest a few players, which that's obviously with one eye on on Wednesday, but listen, I'm sure they've got more than enough to beat Lewin today. I 
thinking, I'm worried about the goal difference between us and Arsenal in a minute. So I'm looking at least four or five today. I don't want to lose the league title on goal difference like some other, some other uh, teams have done it. So five, maybe six. I'm just seeing team news though, so I know he's got one eye on Wednesday, but uh, I think it should be goals today. Got, got to be goals today, definitely. What do you think? I've gone for five nil on my Super 6, so I'm hoping for a big score. I'm hoping for more, because I'm still bitter about looting from 1983. I still I don't like it. Honestly, it still hurts me that result. So, uh, I don't want to see David play running on the pitch today. Uh, no matter what. <laughs> what do you reckon? You're younger. What do you think today? Well, we'll see what happens, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll win. I'll win nonetheless. Let's get the win first. like a boxing match right now. It, this should have been stopped, in my opinion. Luton are just camping in, in their own half. I have no idea how Manchester City have not been able to score more than the one goal. They've defended so well, I have to say, and uh, they put everything it's like a pinball machine in there. Uh, you know, I, I, I've never seen a central defender in Diaz being the last man and, and 25 yards out from Luton's goal. It's incredible, it's incredible, and I'm hoping goals will open up in the second half. Surely it's only a matter of time. It, it's got to be. They, they, they're going to tire. It's, I know as a player, when you're chasing shadows and defending for so long, you will get tired. And so I imagine that little gap will open. And I think you'll see they'll try and use Edison more because then the space will open up and they will try and hit him on the break. So hopefully the goals will flow. Great there, Cheesy, mate. I think we are, we're on our way now. We've, we've just clicked, haven't we? Just clicked right now. And I think we was might have just maybe one one game, like one game last week against Arsenal. Just a little bit late. I think if we had that win, I think we would have just won it. That, that's what I just think that's. But I think we're there. Come on, Real Madrid. Come on, Come on, Cheesy. What do you think? I agree with that, mate. I think we're on our way now. If, like I say, if we got the um, we got the win against Arsenal. I think we'll be well, we'll be well there in pole position, but just wait and see now, wait on the other results, we'll do our job, win every game now for the rest of the season, but like I say, bring on Wednesday, back to back Champions League, come on, come on City! In the fourth game, I thought we more chances to probably, you know, get a better goal difference onto Arsenal and Hill, but win to win, let's say, yeah, it would have been nice to keep a clean sheet, like, but like, win to win, and we go on to the general matter. Everybody's in the right mood now for Wednesday, oh, 100%, they? like I say, obviously Harlan come off early, De Bruyne come off early, so it'd be good, good chance for them to get some rest and Is throw off some game. Mm. Yes, I think so. You've got, be, you've got to be confident, you've got to be confident, so um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon it's all for sure. It was a bit dull to start with, thought the game was a bit, you know, we were being pegged back, 12, 11 behind the ball, sorry. Um, but yeah, it was a nice comfortable win in the end. Quite pleased with the scorers, very pleased actually. Didn't quite see uh, Doku doing his uh, dance, I don't know whether you saw him do it. That's all I was waiting for when he scores. But Great goal, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, all of them were, all of them were. Really enjoyed every one of them. But they meant business when they come out, really. That first goal was brilliant, well played, all of them. They really dug in deep and got that goal, so really happy with that result. Takes us to the top of the table, I think. And it's set everything up nicely for Wednesday, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, and it's nice to see Roger get a break, because he's, he's just our main man, isn't he? You just can't, and Phil as well. I, I just can't praise them all enough, to be honest. You know, we're finally, now, we're extremely lucky, and when I look back, we've always, I think we've always had that thing, though, City fans, it's always been like a family thing. I've always found that it's always the community. Even though we get slapped off about the empty seats and everything, the fans are here that mean to be here and that want to see the team pass the line and that's what we're here for, to cheer them on each game. You know, it's, it's good to get the goal difference up as well, wasn't it? You know, plus four. We've just got to keep doing it, haven't we? This is going to go down to the last last game, this. And I think if we don't get the goal difference up, that, that could, I think that could hurt us, that. You know, we, what's Arsenal now, 51? 
So what are we on now? About 43, something like that. So for me, it's always, for me, it's always goal difference. But, um, Two more league games, there is, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just gotta go for it. You gotta go for it. I'd like to, you know, like every City fan, we just want to see the trophy. Don't we? That's what we want to see. But I felt today. I mean, oh, like, like I said to before, it's just so one-sided. Seeing that, it should have been six or seven. So today's performance was was brilliant. To be fair, especially after the performance we had on Tuesday night and obviously we've rested a lot of players and I thought the other players came in and did a great job to be fair and five goals is going to do the goal difference and very good if it comes to the crunch at the end of the season so hopefully fingers crossed everything else will get a result we need with the other teams tomorrow and then we'll get an even better result on Wednesday next week it's an exciting time to be a blue isn't it it's absolutely fantastic as always. We've had you know, 10 years of it now and it just seems to be getting better and better. So happy days, happy days. Well, I started this vlog by reminiscing, if that's the right word, about that 1983 home defeat by Luton that sent City down. And the only thing to talk about at the end of this video is the team of 24, which once again, even though there were lots of changes today, showed how special they are under Pep Guardiola and who can rule out the possibility of repeating what they did last year. Long way to go, big matches to come, I'll be at all of them and uh, well we'll see uh, whatever happens whether City win or lose it doesn't change my passion for being a City fan. What I would like to do is I'd like to say big thanks to motoringoffencelawyers.com. So if you've been involved in any sort of an incident and you want some support from a really good solicitor, then Kenway Miller are the people to go to. Thanks very much too to M&M Artwork and Mirrors who specialise in all sorts of artwork, framing, that type of thing. And to James Timson, uh, specifically of uh, Timson, the company, uh, for supporting me as they do. So thanks very much. I'll be here, of course, again on Wednesday for the Champions League against Real Madrid, and that promises to be another really special night. Hopefully, if I see you there, you'll say hello. If not, then enjoy the game. And remember this, it's great to be a blue. And if you want to buy one of the T-shirts that says it's great, it's great to be a blue on it, look for the, uh, the link in the description below. Thank you.